and welcome back to Anton Math. In this last video for this unit we're going to be talking about uh, restricted tangent and the inverse tangent function. Now uh, we don't really focus any uh, energy on inverse secant, cosecant, or cotangent uh, because we could write all of those in terms of sine, cosine, and tangent and, and really use the inverse sine, cosine, and tangent functions to, to work with any problems that we're going to need inverse functions for. Now restricted tangent, it has an inverse function and we denote that, not surprisingly, by tangent inverse of x, or this is often called arctangent of x. Now we know that my tangent function, one period of my tangent function is actually already a one-to-one -one function. I'll go ahead and draw it out and we'll see this for ourselves. Right, we know a tangent, I have these asymptotes, that's a bad asymptote, the asymptotes at pi over 2 and at negative pi over 2, don't we? But look, if I do a horizontal line test here uh, with my tangent function, my horizontal lines don't cross my tangent function anywhere twice, do they? So for each value of y here, I have a unique value of x. And for each value of x in one period, I have a unique value of y. Now I'm still restricting my tangent, right? But I'm restric restricting it to one full period. Oh, I just made a mistake. One full period. So my domain of this, now notice I'm using an open bracket, is going to be minus pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Okay. Now I use the open brackets here because remember uh, tangent of minus pi over 2 and tangent of pi over 2 themselves do not exist. That's 1 over 0 in both cases. 1 over 0, negative 1 over 0. These don't exist. Um, but we can approach them as close as we want, right? And we just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger or smaller and smaller and smaller in the case on the left. And I'll go ahead and, <clears throat> and draw out what this arc tangent looks like. It's going to look a little something like this. It's kind of like tangent. Again, you flip that x-axis to the top and then the, I don't know, go outside <laughs> and look at it from the other side. It's kind of like that, I guess, uh, yeah, a little bit. Now, I'm going to be capping out up here at positive pi over 2, right? Because I know that my domains and my ranges switch. And I'm going to be bottoming out down here at minus pi over 2. There are these horizontal asymptotes, right? As I go further to the right, um, my arc tangent gets closer to pi over 2 and further to the left it gets closer to minus pi over 2 but again it never really crosses them right I know that I have this restriction on my range that follows from the restriction on my domain in my restricted tangent okay now filling out the range here I know that tangent goes up forever and I know that tangent goes down forever here. In fact, there is no real value y that is not realized in this one period of tangent. So for range here, I'm going to put a double barred r. Right? And what that means is this double barred r means all real numbers. Right? For any real number that you can think of, we can come up with some value between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, so that tangent of that value equals that real number. And that's because of these asymptotes, tangent goes up and down forever, right? It just keeps getting bigger and smaller. Now arctangent absorbs this quality in that it is defined everywhere. Arctangent's domain is all real numbers. So this is kind of nice. You'll see with tangent our cancellation laws are a little bit more open. Now, we'll define this in the same way we have been. If tangent of inverse of x equals y, that's the same thing as tangent of y equals x. Okay, they are inverse functions of each other. And we have these cancellation laws. Now, the first cancellation law, tangent of tangent inverse of x equals x. Now in the past we had a restriction here, right? This was only true when tangent inverse, or, or in the other videos it was sine inverse and cosine inverse, when they were defined. But tangent inverse is defined everywhere. So this is for all x, or 
um, I'm going to use some notation just to, we like to learn new notation, right? This means for all x, this means in, and this is the set of real numbers. This is a math sentence, right? I, I like to work these in here, uh, as many of you know. Um, learning is good, right? So this means, in, in math language, this means for all x in real numbers, or for all real numbers x. Okay. <laughs> You know, you're asking, why don't I just write that? Well, well, I did, though. I did. And we have our second cancellation law. Tangent inverse of tangent x equals x. Now, this one is going to, be, is going to have a restriction. Right? This is only going to be true uh, for the restricted domain of tangent, just like before with sine and cosine. So this is for any x between negative pi over 2, and I'm using strictly less than here, right? This is not less than or equals, uh, like we had in sine and cosine. So negative pi over 2, strictly less than x, strictly less than positive pi over 2, right? Now again, this bottom one always does have a solution, but sometimes we're going to need to evaluate the tangent inside uh, before applying that inverse function. Okay, let's do some examples, and then we're going to be all done for this section. It's a pretty straightforward section. Examples. Uh, let's look at, let's say I had tangent inverse of 1. Right, so this basically says, uh, where does tangent equal 1 between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2? And I know that tangent of pi over 4 is 1, right? That's where both sine and cosine are equal to each other inside of my restricted domain here. So tangent inverse of 1 is going to be equal to pi over 4, right? That means tangent of pi over 4 equals 1, right? Okay, next one, let's look at tangent inverse of the square root of 3. So in other words, I'm saying where between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 does tangent equal the square root of 3? Now I know it's going to be in quadrant 1 because it's positive, and because I'm looking at sine over cosine, this is going to be when sine equals square root of 3 over 2 and cosine equals 1 half, right? And we know that that happens at pi over 3, doesn't it? Okay, now let's look at our cancellation laws. If I have tangent of tangent inverse of 7 pi over 4, What does this equal? Well, this is my first cancellation law, right? I can use this cancellation law always. If I ever have a tangent inverse, I can always plug that into tangent. That's going to cancel every single time, right? This is our first line right here of our cancellation laws. So this is just 7 pi over 4. Easy peasy. Now what about the other way around? Let's go ahead and practice. These are the more tricky kind, right? I have tangent inverse of tangent of 5 pi over 4. Okay, now 5 pi over 4, that's in quadrant 3, so this is outside of my restricted domain, right? If this is bigger than pi over 2, so I need to evaluate. So this is going to be equal to tangent inverse. Now tangent of 5 pi over 4, that has a reference number of pi over 4 in quadrant 3, right? I know that at pi over 4 I get 1, we did that up here, and in quadrant 3, tangent is positive. So this is tangent inverse of 1. And we've already done this problem. This is my first one, so I know tangent inverse of 1 is pi over 4, isn't it? So tangent inverse of tangent 5 pi over 4 is just its reference number, pi over 4. And you'll find that oftentimes, at least for the positive ones in quadrant 1, you will be looking at a reference number to solution whenever you have something like this. All right, that was short and sweet. Uh, in the, the next video, we're going to be starting Chapter 6, and we're going to be covering a lot of the same topics that we covered um, in this Part 5, but we're going to be approaching it in a new way. Instead of looking at real numbers around the unit circle, we're going to start to look at uh, triangles and um, measuring these trigonometric functions in terms of the angles of the unit circle. So we'll see you there.